Ever wish updating a single button on your site didn't feel like you had to rebuild the whole house just to change a light bulb? That's been the reality for most big React apps, slow builds, tangled code, and updates that ripple everywhere. But what if you could split your app into independent rooms so teams can renovate and redecorate without stepping on each other's toes? That's the magic of Module Federation. It lets you share and update parts of your app instantly. No more waiting for the whole thing to rebuild. In this video, we are going to talk about the evolution of front-end architecture, what is meant by module federation, the core concepts, setting up the federated modules, performance optimization and troubleshooting, state management across micro front-ends, and when you should use module federation. Have you ever wondered why we're still building monolithic React applications when backend developers have been enjoying the benefits of microservices for years? or why updating a tiny button component requires rebuilding and redeploying your entire application? What if I told you there's a way to break free from these limitations right now? The front-end landscape is evolving at lightning speed, and if you don't understand module federation today, you'll be playing catch-up tomorrow. I promise that in the next few minutes, you'll gain insights that will completely transform how you architect your React applications, making them more scalable, more maintainable, and giving your development team superpowers they never knew they needed the evolution of front-end architecture. Remember the days when we built massive single-page applications? Those monolithic SPAs seemed like a great idea until build times slowed to a crawl, deployments became nerve-wracking events, and dependencies got so tangled they resembled a bowl of spaghetti after a toddler's birthday party. This is where micro front-ends enter the picture. They're essentially the front-end equivalent of microservices. Think of them as breaking up that massive Thanksgiving dinner into a series of perfect small plates that can be prepared, served, and enjoyed independently. Each team gets their own kitchen, their own ingredients, and their own schedule, but the diners still experience one cohesive meal. What exactly is Module Federation? At its core, Module Federation is a Webpack 5 feature that allows JavaScript applications to dynamically share code and dependencies at runtime. It's like having multiple restaurants that can instantly borrow ingredients and recipes from each other without planning ahead. Traditional code sharing is like shipping frozen meals. Everything gets packaged, versioned, and distributed through NPM. But module federation is like having a teleportation device that instantly brings fresh components from one application directly into another, right when you need them. The technical magic happens through the module federation plugin in Webpack 5, which orchestrates this dynamic sharing with a rich set of configuration options. It's not just theoretical. Companies are using this right now to transform how their development teams collaborate and deploy. The core concepts you need to know. Let's break down the key players in this architectural revolution. Host. Think of this as your main application. The one that's inviting other modules to the party. This is the central application that loads and uses modules from other applications or else remotes. It's responsible for configuring which remotes it will consume and which dependencies should be shared across all applications. Remote. These are the applications that bring special gifts, modules, to share with the host. These are the independent applications that expose their own modules or components for other applications, hosts, to consume. Each remote decides what it wants to share with the host. Exposes. These are the specific modules, components, or features that a remote application makes available for others to use. This is configured in the remote's module federation settings. Remotes. This is the configuration in the host application that specifies which remote applications it expects to consume modules from. This is how the host knows where to look for shared features. Shared. These are the dependencies, like React, React DOM, etc., that are shared between the host and remotes to avoid duplication and version conflicts. This ensures all applications use the same instance of a library preventing bugs and saving resources. While module federation is often mentioned alongside micro frontends, they're not the same thing. Micro frontends are the architectural pattern of breaking up your frontend into independent pieces, while module federation is the technology that makes sharing between those pieces seamless. Why should you care about module federation? Module federation offers game-changing benefits that make it a compelling choice for modern web development. It enables true scalability by allowing teams to work independently on different parts of a project, much like multiple construction crews building various sections of a skyscraper at the same time. Code reuse becomes seamless, 
as components like a date picker can be developed once and shared across multiple applications without duplication. Performance is also greatly enhanced since users only need to load the parts of the application they actually use rather than downloading the entire app up front. Collaboration among distributed teams is simplified as teams can work in parallel and deploy changes independently, eliminating the need for constant coordination. Additionally, rapid deployment is possible because updates to remote modules can be rolled out instantly, fix a bug in a shared component once, and every application using it benefits from the update immediately. Setting up your first federated modules. Implementing module federation is not just a theoretical exercise, it's a practical and surprisingly straightforward process once you grasp the pattern. The core steps involve creating separate applications for your host and remotes using frameworks like Create React App, Next.js, or any other of your choice. The essential requirement is to use Webpack 5, as its module federation plugin is the key enabler for this architecture. You then configure the module federation plugin in each application, specifying which modules to expose from your remotes and setting up your host to consume those remote modules. It's also important to define shared dependencies to avoid duplication and ensure efficient use of resources. Once everything is set up, you can start your applications and see the modules being shared seamlessly in action. While other modern bundlers like Vite can also be used for module federation, thanks to plugins such as OriginJS slash Vite plugin federation, this example focuses on Webpack due to its mature built-in support and widespread adoption in production environments. Let me show you what this looks like in code. Imagine we have a header component we want to share across applications. In our remote apps webpack config, we'd have something like this. First, in the remote application, the one that owns the header component, we configure webpack using the module federation plugin. Here, we give our remote the name header app and specify remote entry js as the file that will expose our modules. We then expose the header component by mapping dot slash header to the actual file path dot slash src slash app. Additionally, we mark React and React DOM as shared dependencies and set them as singletons to ensure only one instance of each is loaded across applications, which helps avoid version conflicts. Next, in the host application, the one that wants to use the shared header, we again use the module federation plugin in the webpack configuration. This time, we name the host home app and declare a remote called header app pointing to the URL where the remote's entry file can be found. We also share React and React DOM here, just like in the remote, to maintain consistency and prevent duplicate copies. Finally, in the host application's code, we dynamically import the remote header component using React's lazy and suspense features. We use lazy to asynchronously load the header from header app slash header and wrap it in a suspense component to provide a fallback UI while the header is loading. This setup allows us to seamlessly render the remote header component as if it were part of the host application's own code base. It's a bit like ordering takeout from another restaurant and serving it at your own dinner table. Your guests, or in this case your users, get a seamless experience without ever knowing the difference. Advanced techniques and real-world applications. In the real world, module federation shines in complex scenarios. Imagine a design system team that maintains your company's UI components. Instead of publishing NPM packages and waiting for teams to update, they can expose their components as federated modules. Every application automatically gets the latest version without rebuilding. Or consider a large enterprise application where different teams own different domains. Team A handles user management, Team B owns analytics, and Team C builds dashboards. With module federation, each team can develop, test, and deploy independently while still creating a unified experience. It's like a band where each musician can practice and perfect their parts separately, but when they come together, they create beautiful harmony. Performance optimization and troubleshooting. When using module federation, it's important to pay attention to performance optimization, as this approach introduces new considerations for how your application loads and manages code. For example, you'll need to strike a balance with chunking and code splitting, weighing the trade-off between making fewer large network requests versus several smaller ones, much like choosing between one big grocery trip or multiple smaller ones. Deciding between eager and lazy loading is also crucial. Sometimes you'll want certain modules loaded right away while others can be fetched on demand, similar to meal prepping for the whole week versus cooking as needed. Additionally, 
Prefetching allows you to start loading critical modules before they're actually needed, which is akin to preheating your oven before you start baking. However, there are also some common pitfalls to watch out for when implementing module federation. Ensuring that shared dependencies are properly configured is essential to avoid runtime errors that can disrupt your application. Be mindful of module name collisions, which can occur when multiple remotes expose modules with the same name leading to confusion, much like having two friends named Alex at your party. Finally, keep an eye on version mismatches among shared dependencies, as inconsistent versions can introduce subtle and hard to diagnose bugs, comparable to using different measuring systems when building parts of a rocket, a recipe for disaster. State management across micro frontends. Managing state across micro frontends is a tricky challenge because, unlike a monolithic app with a single Redux store, independently deployed units require more sophisticated solutions. Some teams use custom events, allowing applications to communicate through browser events like neighbors chatting over the fence. Others share their Redux or Zustan store as a federated module so different apps can consume the same state. Another approach is host orchestration where the host application manages the global state and passes relevant data down to its remotes. Each of these strategies helps maintain consistency while preserving the independence of each micro frontend. Let's break down how sharing a Redux store works with module federation. In the remote applications webpack configuration, we use the module federation plugin to make the Redux store available to other applications. We start by giving our remote app a name, in this case, remote app. Then, under the exposes property, we specify that the dot slash store module located at dot slash src slash store should be made available to any host application that wants to consume it. In the shared section, both React and Redux are marked as singletons. This is important because it ensures that only one instance of each library is loaded across all federated modules, preventing version conflicts and making sure that the state remains consistent. With this setup, the host application can import the shared store directly from the remote app. This means that all micro frontends within your application can access and update the same Redux store, ensuring they operate on a consistent, synchronized state. As a result, actions dispatched in one micro frontend are immediately reflected in the state seen by others, making state management seamless and predictable across your entire application. When should you use module federation? Module federation is best suited for large-scale applications that can be split along clear business or domain boundaries, especially when multiple teams need the autonomy to independently develop and deploy features. It is particularly valuable when you want to share components, utilities, or even state management across several applications, enabling code reuse and reducing duplication. However, this architecture introduces additional complexity and operational overhead so it's most effective for organizations that have the resources and discipline to manage these challenges. For smaller teams or projects, a modular monolith might provide enough flexibility without the extra complexity of module federation. Much like choosing between a multi-family home and separate houses, the right approach depends on your scale and needs. The future of module federation. The ecosystem is evolving rapidly with new tools and best practices emerging to address current limitations. We're seeing enhanced support for server-side rendering, improved state management solutions, and better tooling for testing and deployment. As adoption grows and the ecosystem matures, module federation is poised to become a fundamental technology for building scalable, modular web applications. It's not just a trend, it's a new paradigm that's here to stay. Module federation represents a genuine paradigm shift in how we build React applications. By enabling dynamic code sharing at runtime, it unlocks new possibilities for scalability, collaboration, and performance that were previously out of reach. I hope you learned a lot about React Module Federation from this video. If you want to watch similar content, please subscribe to the channel. Turn on notifications to get notified when I release a new video. If you found this helpful, share this video, like, and comment your ideas below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great week.